Welcome to this week's edition of The Mediator with me, your host, Brian West, here to give you the top eight headlines and developing news stories that made it this week. As usual, I give you the top eight local headlines and developing news stories that made it first, followed by a movie clip, a skit, a trailer, or something that's going on in the community, or maybe some pictures. And then I'll give you the top eight international headlines and developing news stories that made it in, folks. So let's waste no time. Oh, yeah. Let's get to it. Story number one. Another homicide in Youngstown. A 22-year-old man was found dead on the Youngstown's north side, northwest side. It's not good news. The man was fatally shot near Donald and North Bella Vista Avenue. Homicides are never good for a city, and death is not a symptom of life. So that's, uh, that's not good news. Now, Youngstown, like many cities struggling with crime, will continue to develop a bad reputation if homicides continue to increase. That's why story number one made it this week. Story number two, sounding the alarm on local health. An editorial citing Ohio being ranked at about 42nd in the nation for average life expectancy deserves some attention. This is an editorial. Now, health is big and unhealthy people in Ohio is what got this story in. The editorial also pointed out of the, the, the about it was pointed out about smoking and drinking. It talks about how, how these are factors contributing to poor health in Ohio. So now may be the time to try to stop. This is a big headline that is uh, that is often overlooked. And that's why I made it this week. Big, big headline. Health is big nowadays. Big, big headline. Story number three. GOP endorses DeWine for a second term. The grand old party, the Republican Party. 36 to 26 is the vote from the GOP to endorse Mike DeWine. In a meeting that lasted three hours and 45 minutes, Mike DeWine, uh, is uh has and they talked i guess they're talking about how he's handled COVID 19 who knows what they were talking about in the meeting but uh the, the 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 whole meeting lasted about three hours and 45 minutes it's probably they were talking about how mike dewine has handled COVID 19 because mike dewine's handling of COVID the COVID 19 virus seems to be the main concern with the party and the voters at the moment so that's probably what they were talking about well mike dewine you know you just gotta you gotta find a cure we're gonna have to call on geez so so now overall with the growing hype and uh, around intel gm and the electric vehicle push and the markets that are taking place in ohio all this talk about uh that's going on that's been making headlines now this is uh, this is uh this is all talking about potential growth in the job in the job market on ohio now this seems to be the main factor in what's getting what probably could get uh, DeWine reelected for another term is the fact that uh, there's a lot of potential for growth in Ohio right now. That's why story number three is such a big, big headline. So if it ain't COVID, uh, it, it'd probably be the jobs. But the uh, people, a lot of critics are not happy about the handling of COVID. But if there's a job, then you pay the bills and pay for the cure. Big, big headline. That's why story number three he made it this week. Story number four. Chill can lawsuits carry on. The city went out of its way to allow a chill can factory to be built on the east side, and now the city is paying for it. The chill can lawsuits carry on and has exposed what appears to be a desperate deal that failed. Now, the lawsuits, the lawsuit wants about four hundred fourteen thousand dollars and ninety four nine well, nine hundred and forty eight dollars. So four hundred four hundred fourteen thousand nine hundred forty eight dollars and nine cents. That's how much they want, though. Well, some of the money that's in the lawsuit, and the city wants to get back about they want to get back about 1.5 million in water and wastewater funds, according to a local vindicator article. So this is all money that's tied into that chill can factory, and nothing's happening. Now the city purchased 15 properties to seal the deal. The article also says that the city lost about 318,532 dollars and 71 cent in the in the demolish. I guess they in demolishing and all that property. 
property and abatement costs so, and, and demolition and abatement costs. So all that is tied into all this money. So that's a lot of that's been poured into this to the factory. That's not even moving on tax revenue. Tax revenue to the city was also slashed as well because with no factory, there is no cash flow. Uh, now, only a dead investment remains. Now that's that's pretty bad. And, and that's, at a, that's at a loss with uh, each party. That's the city and chill can factory fighting in fighting to the end to to end all this madness so even with nothing happening they're still fighting and they still have to pay these attorneys so uh story number four is just a big big mess and the chill can lawsuits carry on and that's why i made it this week big big hell story number five local reps are pouring a lot of money and resources into the electric vehicle market the amount of money being spent to transform the local community into an electric vehicle market is a lot one article published february 17th says that michael ruley has requested 25 million dollars more to jolt the electric vehicle market in ohio the key word in this article is transition the article points out that 15 million was will be allotted to keep People, automakers uh, tra transition to, to help them transition into electric vehicle manufacturing. So they're transitioning from fossil fuels to try to get people to the electric vehicle. That's that's the that's the key word transition. And 10 million uh, will be allotted in educational grants to create a workforce to prepare for the future. Now, what is taking place in this story has a lot of what well, has everyone debating and arguing about the key word transition from gas fossil fuels to electric vehicles that's why story number five is such a big big headline story number six local redistricting is still in the news redistricting news now the supreme court has been stepping up the pressure on ohio's redistricting commission and uh, after mass opposition from the uh, from the first redistricting plans, uh, some local community leaders said that the redistricting plans were unfair. So, so there's been so there's been a lot going on. The pendulum has been swinging to the right to left in this story. Now, either way, the Ohio wave to vote Republican is still a hot topic because of because of numerous political stories still in circulation before another anticipated election season. So, even with all this stuff, Ohio was still sticking with, with the Republican Party. Party, which is which has its pros and cons in the story because it's uh, affecting how redistrict how redistricting is happening now redistricting plays a big part in how these elections will turn out that's why story number six almost made it to the top two this week big big hell story number seven and the top two local headlines and developing news stories that made it this week for you -wee. cooking it up baby making it happen Story number seven, Youngstown has a big to-do list and roads are on it. Potholes are a problem for drivers, folks. That's a fact. Now, they can cause extensive wear and tear on a vehicle and can really end up costing drivers a lot of money in the long run. Now, in the downswing of a brutal winter, local residents once again must face the ongoing cycle of smooth, then rough, and road well then rough road conditions so smooth and rough road conditions so that's what we got to face the ongoing cycle of this now this topic is yet another task on ohio's to-do list now after the passage of a tax levy to repair roads city residents will be anxious to see road crews get to work after a brutal snowstorm season that's why story number seven means it's top two it's a local headlines in developing news stories this week big big headline we got to get the road smoothing out Whew. like jello pudding baby Whew, yeah story number eight and the top local headline and developing news story that made it this week oh yeah Whoo there's a top story for you to keep you in for yeah Whew. Top story this week. Story number eight. COVID cases are falling, folks. Big news. With cases on the decline, the virus may have run its course, and there are winners and losers in this story. Now, with cases falling and the state having 
and uh, an over 60 percent vaccination rate the topic of what worked and did work or what works and doesn't work is still in the discussion pool folks COVID-19 has stiffened budgets caused some businesses to close and has the medical industry still begging for mercy overall with over 900,000 people dead this is still an aggressively debated topic highlighting what worked and didn't work as case numbers continue to go down and go up sometimes now this virus has created a cult like atmosphere in America and probably the world in the fight and has uh, shifted the pendulum to both sides in the effort to contain the spread to stop it now in this effort a lot of healthy people have stood their ground and decided not to get vaccinated so starting to rate made to the top this week COVID is on the downswing folks we could be finally getting back to life who knows who knows let's hope no surges come about well folks those are our top eight local headlines in developing news stories that made it this week i'll be right back with the top eight international headlines in developing news stories so don't go anywhere you're the media to me bro i'll be right back Assigned to guard the four corners of Escobar, were you not given the duties to rule with an iron fist? I am not strong enough anymore. Who is the leader of the governing board? Luna, sir. She has been appointed to take the place of her father. Escobar's governing board is in danger. Our land is producing enough crops to survive. I can't feed Escobar with dying crops. Magic lady, Nikki, what the hell are you talking about? She comes at night and visits me in my sleep. First, I know your story, and you can't hurt her anymore. She's coming to you for a reason. What do you do about my son? Does this drawing look familiar to you? That tool is gone again, which means something's about to go down. They want to hand Escobar over to you. I don't think it would be wise for Luna to put herself in danger at this pivotal time. Do you doubt me? If we might now, We'll save our planet and our people. You have to defend Escobar. If she's worthy, they won't kill her. This is gonna be fun. I ain't used him in a minute. I'm with Luna. Defend us, Luna. You have my blessing. And that'll be our ticket to the North Star. I'll be a new Escobar. Tune in and don't forget to subscribe to Method 8 Inc. YouTube channel. You can also watch free public entertainment. And don't forget to show some support by visiting www.method8inc.com by buying something, clicking something, watching something, or just reading something. You can also sponsor a program as well. That's www.method8inc.com. Buy stuff, watch stuff, or read stuff. Welcome back. Welcome back. Now it's time to get to the top eight international headlines and developing news stories that made it this week. Folks, we are at the end of Black History Month, and I uh, uh, hope everybody learned something. And what I learned is that uh, we have to be sensitive to the needs of the next generation. Uh, somebody came into my office, one of my uh, African American friends, a young lady, and uh, she was uh, upset. <laughs> So Brian, you know, I just, I guess she was watching a, or watching an episode about black history and slavery. And she felt bad. You know, and this, this is what people f uh, fall into uh, in Black History Month. They start feeling bad and hurt and conflicted inside, you know, feeling uh, anxiety and pain. And I told old girl, I said, it'll be all right. You know, we, we've got a good future ahead. Everything will be fine. And uh, she said, Brian, I don't know, you know. <laughs> Uh, I, said, I don't know why they did such a I said it's all right. You know, we're in the twentieth twenty twenty two. Things things will get better. So I grabbed and I said, Come on. Brotherly love, brother and sister love. You know, everything will be fine. And we bonded together. We we started singing uh old hymns from the uh, books and and we started realizing that we've got to stick together as people, as Americans. And uh, that's my Black History story to conclude this Black History Month. And it's all about joy and peace and uh, making 
patching up the past and moving on to a brighter and better future. So all you sisters and brothers out there, people who don't understand history, latch on to something positive, folks. Join hands and be grateful for tomorrow. <laughs> Black History Month can teach us all something new, something brand new. And joy, joy and peace is more, more special than war. Ooh, ooh, well, folks, that's my story. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. <laughs> story number one. Uh, what caused migrant encounters to fall in January? Big, big headline. U.S. policy can be the cause of encampments uh, to stay in, in Mexico. So encampments to swell up. Now, in Mexico, that means they're just sitting in Mexico waiting for something new. Now, although the encampments are swelling, the reason is not only policy, but the still growing attention on the U.S.-Mexico border. So with this stuff being in the news, the key talking point is that the fact that this story it, it was was in the story is that when uh when things are quiet people sneak in under the radar but with when border stories are constantly streaming uh everyone is on guard so when that when border stories are constantly in the news this story is staying alive that's what story number one uh made in this week because uh the more people are talking about the more the more people will be aware that's going on but once people stop talking about it then uh the people will uh, not be be making in they'll probably stay in encampments so this see i i guess this is a little bit there's more to the story but that's why i made it this week so people can understand what's actually happening in story number one big big headline. story number two america's small business community is still screaming for help that's not good now when it comes to the cash flow it's never enough for a small business for the small business community now covid hit the small business the small business sector so hard that many had to find ways to adapt and some did not uh being some went to, to the tech market and online community to get help now this story has to stay alive to help the small business businesses screaming for help now now the small businesses that did not survive are still making headlines because many of them are blaming COVID-19 regulations for their downfall now keeping good accounting records has a lot to do with this story because without adequate records some of these businesses could not get loans so that's a big big uh big big reason now capital has everything to do with the story because where there is money there's investments and there is business movement so if people are not keeping the books they can't get the funding that they need because this is what banks and the government especially ppp loans look for that's why story number two made it this week big big headline. story number three how COVID brought the world to its knees that's a fact now a virus that shut the world down and sent people into panic mode is what got this story in. COVID-19 has not only uh, changed how the world operates, but it has scared a lot of people who were not prepared for the gut punch that that it came with. So a lot of people are not prepared for this. Now, what is keeping this story alive is the fact that if someone was struggling with COVID-19, they're struggling even more now. But the main talking point is how people are coming together to make things work and to make things better. That's why story number three made in this week. It's not all bad news. Some people are seeing being optimistic. This is big, big hell. Story number four. Cases are down, so are things almost back to normal? The loosening up has started, folks, and as the data comes in, America could finally be seeing signs of normalcy. Nice word. I like that word. Now, the hardest part about the story will be stopping the infighting from who is right or who was right and who was wrong or who is wrong about COVID-19. So people are still fighting over this. Now, if people can focus on moving forward, that may work better for us. Now, human behavior is what has the story trending because if people can calmly find a place to fit in, it could minimize a lot of the uncertainty and panic when trying to get back on a level playing field. That's why story number four is such a big, big headline. Well, folks, those are our top four international headlines in developing news stories that I made this week. I'll be right back with the top, top four. So don't go anywhere. You're the media. It'll be Brian West. Peace is the way, young blade. If you want to check out the stories that almost made it in or did make it in, go to our Twitter feed on our website. Check out everything. All of the sources are there. If you go to the website, it's M-E-T-H-O-D, the number eight, I-N-C.com. <laughs> 
Welcome back. Welcome back. Now it's time to get to the top, top four international headlines and developing news stories that I made it this week. Folks, we are ending this Black History Month on a on a better note as people try to grasp uh, history, especially African-American history. And, uh, you know, a lot of us, uh, we go into uh, these classes and we come out a different person. And uh, is, is uh, I think sometimes when you do learn and read about it and, and see what happened uh, it, it 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 gives you an idea of 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 empathy passion compassion and a lot of those words that involve uh just understanding human uh, human human empathy of uh, human kind and stuff so so i just know uh, coming out of some of my classes of, of black history classes in the past in my life you know me and my white brothers my black brothers we come out and we'd be like man and my, my black, my white brothers would come up, man, you know, it'd be all right, bro. You know, we got to make it better. And my black brothers would be like, yeah, bro, you know, we got it. We got it. And uh, we come together, we make music and write stories about a better future. And uh, that's what Black History Month has, has taught us over the years. And that's why we, that's why I think it's important that we learn about history and uh, life and stuff like that, because it really changes the atmosphere and, uh, all the only thing I can say is that if we don't, then uh, we'll forget. And, uh, I even made a song about it. We can be friends. We can love to the end. If it's black or white, there will be a bond of Peace in, in, in the end. When it's all said and done, my friend. Whew. My album be coming out this this week. Ugh. Can't wait. Got some good songs on there about love, peace, and happiness and joy. Even for Vladimir Putin, baby. Whew. Well, folks, let's waste no time. <laughs> ah, joy moment. Let's get to it. Story number five. The IRS needs help, folks. It's tax season, and for a couple of years, the IRS has been undermanned with a huge backlog of paperwork. Now, with everyone talking about money, the attention is on the institution that collects for the government to be beefed up. So everybody's talking about the IRS being beefed up to start collecting more money. Now, this is a, a key story because with the focus on government spending and accountability, the attention will mainly be on the IRS now. Now, nobody wants to be an enemy of the IRS. That's what got the story in because the IRS will find a way to get you to pay up. Big, big headline. Story number six. America needs more teachers, nurses, and doctors. Always. Never enough. Now, with a lot of teachers, nurses, and doctors looking for the exits, that means that there are a lot of potential vacancies to fill. Now, every one of these professions are in need of a few good applicants, folks. Especially when you look at the, the crisis that takes around the world. We need interpreters all the time, uh, nurses, teachers. And there's never enough need. So if you don't have anything to do, get educated. Big, big headline. Uh, this story shines light on how each profession has been affected by COVID-19 and uh, how they're uh, impacting the, the market now. That's why story number six almost made it to the top two this week. Big, big headline. Story number seven and the top two international headlines and developing news stories that made it this week for you to keep you informed. Everyone is talking money. Story number seven. Big, big headline. Whew. Almost there. One more story to go, baby, and I am clear for takeoff. It's just about, in just about every story these days, people are talking money, folks. Big, big headline. Everybody is talking about, uh, is trying to make a book. Everybody is trying to make a book. Everybody's talking about making a book. And as prices go up, people need to account for inflation. Thus, keeping this story alive, financial advisors have been very, very busy trying to keep investors happy while also motivating them to stay optimistic. Businesses that need help are doing everything that they can to keep their workers happy. Money talk and paying up is on everybody's radar in today's economy. Most strategists say that the best investment 
anybody can make is the local is in the local economy so the local investment because the money circulates within the community so you cannot beat investing locally that means uh, donations all that stuff now money talk is keeping this story alive and it's saving the people money and saving people's pocketbooks because they're starting to seek wise counsel. That's why story number seven made it to the top two this week. Big big hell. Story number eight and the top international headline and developing news story that made in this week. Joy. Joy. God's great joy. Ooh, joy. Joy. And in every story. Ooh, story number eight. How big a role does China, foreign and domestic conflicts play in American economics? Big, big headline story number eight. Every time a big story hits the mainstream, it affects the American economy. The China conflict is one of those big stories because we could be seeing a shift in business thinking. Entrepreneurs and thinkers are starting to think domestically at home, and that means inner, strat inner strategic investments and uh, less global world investments could be on the menu. Now, domestic policies and incentives play uh, play a big part in this thinking also. So all the stuff, policies, legislation, it all comes in the package. Now this story is still uh, developing because changes and logistical moves play uh, play a big part, and uh, and this is this is a big part in how playmakers are making things happen every day. Now thus keeping this story alive. So once you start changing the packaging a little bit and, and adding some incentives, people start thinking a little differently, especially businesses, business owners. Hollywood and the NBA could be seeing uh, uh, changes also because these two American industries d depend heavily on China and the global economy. Now, in addition to that, the more stories that keep pouring in about Ukraine and Russia, the more uncertainty will flow into the markets. And that's not good news. Now, the sad part about this part of this part of the story is that whatever happens in this conflict with Russia and Ukraine, if it keeps escalating, if, if, if Putin keeps moving the troops, he will be the blame for what happens to people dying. So he will be the sole blame because this was his decision and, and why he did it. So this this is this was his choice. That's why Sturm Braid made it to the top of the week because all these all this affects uh, economics and how people spend and everybody was settled, especially Ukrainians. People were settled. They were doing their lives. But now talk of war is never good talk. That's why Sterner Brady made it to the top this week. Well, folks, those are our top eight local and international headlines and developing news stories that made it this week. I hope you got something on today's program. I always get something out of doing the research. If you want, if, well, I wouldn't forget this tagline. I would like to thank all the news outlets. As usual, I like to thank all the news outlets, the people on the front lines, the journalists, the media. You deserve all the credit. I'm just the media, the man in the middle. If you want to show some support, it does not take much. All you have to do is visit the website on the screen. Buy something, click on something, watch something, read something, or just sponsor the program. Thank you so much for tuning in this week, folks. I hope you had a good Black History Month. I hope you learned something, and I hope we move on to a better, prosperous future. And uh, kind of uh, just uh, look at the past as an example to make that future better. Well, folks, thank you so much for tuned in this week. I am out of here. Thank you for tuning to The Mediator with me, Brian West. Have a good week, everybody. Peace. Have no fear, fellow citizens.